Do you know the right way to water your plants? Or do you sometimes wonder why your plants don't seem to thrive despite your best efforts? Welcome to the world of plant watering. It's not just about dumping a glass of water into a pot and hoping for the best. It's an art, a science, and a labor of love. Every plant, whether it's an indoor fern or a backyard rosebush, has its own unique watering needs and techniques. Understanding these needs is crucial. Too little water and your plant could wither, too much and it might drown. The right balance can make all the difference between a plant that merely survives and one that truly thrives. But don't worry, it's not as daunting as it might sound. We're here to help you navigate this green terrain, to decode the language of leaves and roots, and to unlock the secrets of proper plant watering. So, stay tuned as we unveil the secrets of proper plant watering. Understanding your plant's specific watering needs is the first step to keeping it healthy. Just like people, each plant is unique and has its own care requirements. The amount of water a plant needs can be influenced by numerous factors including the type of plant, its size, location, and the climate it is in. Let's start with the type of plant. Certain plants, like succulents and cacti, are adapted to arid environments and require less water. On the other hand, tropical plants like ferns and orchids thrive in humid conditions and need more frequent watering. The size of the plant is another important aspect to consider. Larger plants have more foliage to support and hence, they require more water as compared to smaller ones. But remember, more water doesn't mean drowning the plant. It's about providing a consistent supply. Location plays a crucial role too. Indoor plants generally need less water than outdoor ones due to lower light and temperature levels. For potted plants, be aware that they can dry out faster, especially if they're in clay pots, which absorb water. Climate can't be overlooked either. In warmer climates or during summer months, evaporation rates are high which can dry out the soil faster. Conversely, in cooler climates or during winter, plants may require less watering as the soil retains moisture for longer periods. Now, how can you tell if you're overwatering or underwatering? Overwatered plants often have yellow leaves and a wilted look, even though the soil is wet. Underwatered plants on the other hand, have dry, brittle leaves and the soil may pull away from the edges of the pot. If you notice any of these signs, adjust your watering schedule accordingly. It's always better to err on the side of underwatering, you can always add more water but you can't take it away. Remember each plant is unique and so are its watering requirements. So get to know your green friends better, and they'll reward you with their lush healthy growth. Now that you understand your plant's needs, it's time to master the art of watering. Let's dive into some of the most effective watering techniques. First up is bottom watering. This method is a favorite among indoor plant owners, especially those with potted plants. It involves placing the pot in a container of water and letting the plant absorb moisture from the bottom up. This encourages the roots to grow deeper and stronger, and it's a great way to ensure that the water reaches all the roots, not just those near the surface. Another technique is misting, which is more than just a refreshing spritz for your green friends. It's a way to imitate a plant's natural habitat, particularly for tropical plants that thrive in humid conditions. Just remember, misting is not a substitute for watering. It's a supplementary hydration method to keep the leaves moist and clean. Now let's talk about the best time to water your plants. Contrary to popular belief, there's actually a preferred time window for watering, and that is early morning or late evening. Watering in the early morning gives your plants ample time to absorb the water before the heat of the day evaporates it. On the other hand, watering in the late evening allows your plants to soak up the hydration overnight, ready to photosynthesize come morning. But why not in the middle of the day you might ask? Well, watering at high noon when the sun is at its peak can cause water to evaporate before it's fully absorbed. Plus, water droplets on leaves can act like tiny magnifying glasses, potentially burning your precious plants. In essence, watering is not just about quenching your plants' thirst, but it's also about mimicking their natural environment as closely as possible. Each technique has its own benefits and best uses, so don't be afraid to experiment and see what works best for your plants. The right technique and timing can make a huge difference in your plants' health, so keep these tips in mind and watch your green friends thrive. Despite our best intentions, we sometimes make mistakes that can harm our plants. It's all part of the learning process, yet it's essential to identify these slip-ups early to keep our leafy friends in top-notch condition. One of the most common mistakes is overwatering. It's easy to think that more water equals more growth, but that's not always the case. Too much moisture can suffocate the roots, leading to root rot and an unhealthy plant. So how can you avoid overwatering? 
A good rule of thumb is to check the soil's moisture level. If the top inch of soil is dry, it's time to water. If not, hold off a little longer. On the flip side, underwatering can be just as harmful. A parched plant can wilt and eventually die from lack of hydration. To avoid this, ensure you're familiar with your plant's specific watering needs. Some plants prefer their soil to dry out completely between waterings, while others like to remain consistently moist. So do a little research and get to know your plant's preferences. Another common mistake is watering at the wrong time. Watering during the heat of the day can lead to rapid evaporation, meaning your plant won't get the hydration it needs. On the other hand, watering late at night can leave your plant sitting in damp soil for prolonged periods, promoting fungal growth. The best time to water is typically in the early morning or late afternoon when temperatures are cooler. Finally, always remember that every plant is unique. What works for one might not work for another. So, take the time to understand each plant's specific needs and adjust your watering routine accordingly. Avoiding these common mistakes can help your plants grow stronger and healthier. After all, a little knowledge and attention can go a long way in the world of plant care, so keep these tips in mind, and your plants will thank you for it. Did you know that different plants have different watering needs? Just like humans, each plant has its unique requirements for hydration. Let's delve into the watering needs of popular indoor, outdoor, and potted plants. Firstly, let's talk about indoor plants, the green companions that add life to your living spaces. Succulents, for instance, like their soil to dry out completely between waterings while ferns prefer consistently moist soil. And then there's the peace lily, a plant that will tell you when it needs water by drooping its leaves. Moving on to outdoor plants, these are a bit more resilient and can generally withstand fluctuations in watering schedules. However, there are still specifics to consider. For instance, roses love a deep watering at the roots, while lavender thrives in drier conditions due to its Mediterranean origin. Now let's not forget about our potted friends. Potted plants generally need more frequent watering as their limited soil dries out quickly. However, the watering needs can still vary. Geraniums, for example, need their soil to dry out completely before the next watering, while impatiens prefer consistently moist soil. As you can see, there's no one-size-fits-all approach to watering plants. It's essential to understand the specific needs of each plant in your care. But how do you determine these needs? Paying attention to your plant is key. Look for signs like wilting, yellowing leaves, or slow growth. Additionally, a good rule of thumb is to check the top 1 to 2 inches of soil. If it's dry, it's usually a good time to water. But remember, this may not apply to all plants, especially those that prefer drier conditions like succulents and cacti. Don't be afraid to experiment and adjust your watering routines based on your observations. Each plant is a learning experience. The more you understand your plant's cues, the better you can cater to its needs. By understanding your plant's specific watering needs, you can ensure it thrives. So, keep these tips in mind, and you might just become the plant whisperer among your friends and family. Happy watering! So there you have it, the ultimate guide to watering your plants. We've journeyed through understanding your plant's unique watering needs and the best times to hydrate them. We've explored various watering techniques, and we've learned how to avoid common mistakes that could potentially harm our green friends. Remember, the journey to mastering plant care is a constant learning process. Every plant is unique, and the beauty lies in understanding their individual needs and responding to them. Proper watering is a significant part of this process. It's not just about keeping the soil moist, it's about creating a balance that allows your plants to thrive and grow in the best possible way. So, keep your watering cans ready, your curiosity peaked, and your love for plants alive. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel for more plant care tips. Until next time, keep watering and keep growing.